Greetings everyone, and welcome to this new video series. I am Alessandro, also known as Dark Ages Workshop. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a passionate miniature painter from Italy, specialized in the grimdark style of painting. I previously released a trilogy of videos last year on YouTube. With those videos, I tried to explain an all-around, beginner-friendly guide on how to delve in this style of painting, covering all sorts of thought processes, materials required, techniques, but also inspiration and world-building aspects ranging from movies to art books and video games. By courtesy of the Cascagoon, the trilogy is available also here on the Green Dark Compendium, and I highly recommend watching it before going for this series. This new content that I'm proposing, exclusively in collaboration with the Grindark Companion platform, is a rich, deep dive into Mordheim, the City of the Damned, a specialist game from Games Workshop released in 1999, known for its absolutely grim, medieval, weird and distorted low fantasy setting. This experience will be somewhat different than usual as it will contain modeling and painting advices and tutorials, as you would expect, but also new insights on the game itself. After experiencing the entirety of the series, you will have a deeper understanding of what the game is about, as I will also discuss the story, the world, the grimdark tones and the aesthetic of the rulebook, along with tips for building and painting terrain pieces for your game table, and finally, how to enrich your gaming experience. All of this in an immersive way to really draw you inside this atmosphere and put you in the right mindset and mood to create and come up with ideas that organically tie into it. For those of you who are simply not interested in the rules aspect, I think you will still learn a lot of insights and ideas to get inspired and how to convey the grimdark aspect in a low fantasy medieval setting. But now, get immersed and relaxed, and let's find out why more time is such an enthralling setting and the perfect one for your grimdark models. More time is a skirmish game where players get to control a warband of misfits and scoundrels fighting each other in a post-apocalyptic medieval city in ruins. Every encounter can be deadly in the City of the Damned, as even vertical exploration between the ramshackle and incinerated buildings can result in mortal ambushes, and each character taken out of action can suffer injuries to the flesh or mind. Between every battle, each warband has to search their buildings for loot and, most importantly, for the Wordstone, fragments of a comet with magical properties that will be used as a currency by the players to expand the range of equipment and the amount of fighters in the warbands. When it came out, the intent behind the game was to provide players and potential customers with a affordable yet rich, complete, boxed skirmish game in order to get them attracted to the Warhammer Fantasy Battle the army counterpart. The box filled to the brim with two warbands, cardboard scenery, tokens and the rulebook was the most convenient way to approach the hobby at the time. To make it short and simple, Mordheim is basically the equivalent of a medieval fantasy necromonda. Everything about the game, from the setting to the characterization of the warbands, the rulebook which we will analyze better later on in the series, was made to leave an impact and last forever. And still today, it really has the sensation of something handcrafted with passion and an incredible amount of character and charisma, inevitably becoming a classic for the years to come. After its release, the game had years worth of support via the Town Crier magazines, which brought up the inclusion of an astounding amount of new warbands, scenarios, settings, rules for fighting in the wilderness, riding carriages, rules for sewer fights and dungeon crawling. 
Eventually, GW interrupted its support. But the rules of the game are now freeware and can be downloaded for free at any time. Just look for the site Broheim. There, you can find all the official rules, along with immense amounts of community created content. With the game being in the hands of the players, it was inevitable for it to be rediscovered again by more than a niche of nostalgic players. As a matter of fact, right now, the game is more popular than ever, and it's being revived by a whole new generation of Mordelists and players. Also thanks to events like the Mordheim 2019 revival in Finland, featuring some of the most talented artists in the grimdark modeling scene, and the latest 2022 events in Italy, some hosted by myself in the city of Polenzo, and in Houston, Texas. I also had the chance to directly talk with the main designer of the game, Gomas Pirina, via video call, who was very enthusiastic to share a lot of information and curiosities that I will also share with you here throughout the series. So, with the revival of this game, and with the grimdark style taking over, although still being a niche in miniature painting, we can really bring interesting modeling projects to life. And if you feel like it, you can enjoy a very stylish and charismatic game in the process, for somewhat little money investment compared to any army game. In Wartime, we are presented with an array of different mature and dark themes, such as madness and corruption of the soul, violence and mutilations, drugs, a moody and foreboding apocalyptic atmosphere, grey morality and aspects of low fantasy horror, such as the horrifying body mutations brought by the taint of chaos, undead creatures and vampires. All of this is perfectly juxtaposed with a tongue-in-cheek black humour to seal the whole formula together. Ideally, your characters would reflect the world around them as a result of the misery, cruelty and madness of this forsaken city that literally corrupts their very souls. As we will explore in the next episode, each warband comes to Mordheim for a different reason, depending on their background origin and often the reason is a race for power demanded by individuals of higher status that send disposable pawns to search for riches while the empire is in the midst of a political turmoil. It can be by the hand of morally corrupt, greedy lackeys or for their salvation and redemption, or perhaps a search for glory and fame driven by a desperate kind of madness in a depraved place where everything is permitted and there is only one law kill or be killed most characters are simple humans by no means overpowered superheroes in shiny armor but rather frail common corruptible human beings of doubtful morality with just enough experience to fight armed with simple military equipment such as maces and clubs, daggers, flails, halberds and various pieces of armor if they wish so and if they can afford it. Some other characters such as the vampire for the undead start off insanely strong compared to humans. Same can be said for the chaos possessed and the vicious and filthy skaven assassins, the ratmen infesting the sewers. This was purposely done to furtherly convey a sense of dread while fighting these monsters, to reflect the actual fear that humans can have when confronted with such terrible creatures. Other than these otherworldly beings, there are not many elements of magic such as powerful artifacts, and the magic being used by warlocks in the settings is very unrefined, raw and dangerous definitely not the epic type of magic that you would imagine for a fantasy world. The themes are therefore gritty and mostly down to earth, grimdark at its finest. 
the main enjoyment of playing Mordheim, apart from creating a warband that represents a theme or style of your own, is to try to optimize your characters to the best of your possibilities and dealing with the consequences of bad luck and abysmal situations. Your characters can become severely injured or crippled, or go mad, become scarred to the point of being terrifying to look at, thus striking fear in the heart of their enemies, or kidnapped by slave traders. But if they survive, and if you can find enough currency, they can also level up and become scary powerful, with the right setup of equipment, abilities and talents. Rather than for power play, I advise players to choose their warbands and build their models in a way that they really can enjoy the stories that can be created in such a playground. There's nothing better than interacting and creating subplots, mini stories inside the game world and adjusting the game with your own home rules according to your group's liking. Scenery is a fundamental part of the gameplay itself. The destroyed buildings and decrepit hamlets that will be used on the table will make your characters perfectly tie in with the atmosphere. The verticality and the nature of these buildings in ruins were thought in such a way that, with a dense enough playground, characters will be able to stealthily approach tight hallways to avoid projectiles scale surfaces, reach higher floors, make ambushes from above, or take high vantage points for shooting with bows and crossbows, making even a couple of strategically placed archers a force to be reckoned with, and every battle dynamic, depending on the playstyle of your warband. In more than one way, the integration of the narrative aspect to the gameplay is fundamental and leads to great moments, especially while building and painting the models as the narrative can be visually represented and makes the experience more immersive and unique. Throughout the series, I will give various ideas on how to create warbands and characters that fit into the style and themes of the game, and try to inspire you to come up with original twists and concepts the rulebook suggests six different warbands. It's up to you to create your own expression of those archetypes and make characters as simple or as complex as you like. The aim of the series is to immerse and motivate you to paint your models in a moody and grimdark style, in line with the low fantasy view we established before, not forgetting to add some elements of weirdness and dark irony. Following up, episode 2, we will dive into the story of Mordheim and the events that brought the city from the sprawling center of commerce of Ostermark to the murderous, incinerated hamlet that we are getting to know. And also, take a quick overview at the official warbands of the rulebook to give you a more precise idea of who are the ill-intentioned individuals that roam the city of the damned.